Hi, I'm Reverend Zach. And I'm just regular Matt. <laughs> to this movie is a hot dog a podcast where me and a friend of mine matthew watch a bad movie critically financially or otherwise then we review it break it down and tell you what we think and this movie was all three of those being bad and boy was it ever a financial flop <laughs> can you uh can you give us some numbers on that well before we do that i should say what movie we watched so people know what the hell we're talking about i don't see why you would do that uh, oh, before we get into anything else, uh, my microphone bo- broke, so if I have an echo, that's why, and if you don't like it, you don't have to listen, but otherwise, uh, go fuck yourself. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> so, we watched uh, 2013's 47 Ronin, starring Keanu Reeves as a white guy, question mark? <laughs> as a white guy demon in Japan. Or something. And this movie... I had completely forgotten about this movie, as I'm sure the rest of the world did. (laughs) And its producers probably tried to. Oh, my God. But so when I I knew that this movie didn't do well, but I didn't have any idea how poorly it did. Uh, Adjusted for inflation, Hmm. this is the second biggest box office bomb ever. Ooh. It lost $150 million. Uh, What was the first? John Carter? Uh, no, the 13th Warrior, that that Michael Crichton adaptation, <laughs> that uh, came out in 99 and that lost 182, adjusted for inflation, but but not adjusted for inflation, on just strict dollars, it is the number one biggest box office bomb <laughs> ever. Congratulations. And you mentioned John Carter, which was in the news last year for being a huge flop. That was only number six. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, 47 Ronin did terribly. Apparently. And I was reading, they're like, oh, it didn't do well in Japan at all, and they were expecting (laughs) And they were banking on, like, a huge Japanese release to, like, save it. (laughs) And Save it didn't. Japan, no. <laughs> and it was terrible. So you know that it lost money. Uh, how much do you? Th- how much do you think this movie cost to make? Because this is this blows me away. Uh, did it cost two hundred million to make? Two hundred and twenty-five million. What? Where was that money? <laughs> Keanu Reeves' hair. <laughs> No, it was the bad guy's hair. That was glorious. I mean, like, the CGI in this was bad. This movie did not look good. Am I wrong? I somewhat disagree. For 2013, this should have looked a lot better. Honestly, my biggest problem with the movie was the dialogue. Yeah, maybe they could have spent some of that money and hired a couple of writers. (laughs) That would have been awesome. Or had somebody review the script before they filmed it? Someone who wasn't like, you know what's really cool? Suicide. <laughs> oh, yeah, what a downer. All right, anyway. All right. <laughs> we, should, we should get into it. Yeah, I don't know. The more I saw this movie, the angrier I was that it like turned out so awful. And, and, and I mean, uh, before we get into the plot, we should really establish that Whoever made this movie, and I didn't bother looking up their name, they were trying to make 300 again with with Samurai and Keanu Reeves. That was clearly what they were trying to do. I mean, you'd think if you could pass Gerard Butler off as Greek, like, maybe you could pass Keanu Reeves off as Japanese, but... But, he, but here's <laughs> the thing. Gerard Butler was very charismatic and, like... Wow, and he was very like big and like a lot of like everything he said was just over the top. Keanu Reeves is mumble mouth in his way through this whole goddamn movie. I'm sorry you have such a hard on for Gerard Butler. Jeez, I'll back off. Well, I, well didn't we all back? <laughs> didn't we all back in 2006? Yeah, okay, a little bit, but uh... <laughs> we're all we're oh, it's a country. We're all kind of half chub. So 
I'm going to start off my uh, description of the beginning with one of your favorite lines from another movie set in an Asian location. Zach, didn't you know a ronin is a samurai <laughs> without a lord? And <laughs> you can already tell that the movie is bad as soon as it starts because there's an opening narration where it's like, you need a history lesson. Oh, do I? Thanks. Oh, do I? Yeah, you don't know anything about <laughs> Japanese culture, you idiot. Let me teach well, the, you. The second you got to be we Wikipedia'd in... so much Japanese culture <laughs> for this movie. That's basically what it was. It was like somebody was reading the Wikipedia article of a Ronin, but not even the body, like that paragraph at the top. That's like, eh, this is what it is. <laughs> so they give us a brief description that a Ronin is a samurai without a lord. And they take ten minutes to basically say that sentence. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that's so true. <laughs> they could literally just say that like in case you didn't know, like that's what the title of the movie is. Okay, are we are we good? Great. But in that On to Keanu that, Reeves is a child. Well, in that same opening dialogue too, instead of like obviously we're gonna compare this to three hundred because it is a direct All a day. direct parallel. In 300, they sort of let you uh, discover that everything was like there was some sort of – there were monsters and there was a little bit of magic. And this one, the narrator just goes, uh, there's magic and dragons. So and like, uh, if that's not your kind of movie, you should you should probably go. But they say that, though. There's not like mysticism in a world of wonder. They're like, there's magic and there's dragons. Welcome to the world of tomorrow. <laughs> And then they just go, the samurai are the best thing ever, blah, blah, blah. Cut to some white kid in Japan. Just running, and it's like, and at a glance, you're like, that's going to be Keanu Reeves. Like, it doesn't look anything like him, but it'll be Keanu Reeves one day. <laughs> and, you know, blah, blah, blah. This kid's a demon. We should kill it. No, we shouldn't kill it. Okay, fast forward to Keanu Reeves. All that's boring. I don't want to go into it. Well, so. I, I don't want to. I don't want to go into that. But I do have to say because this is where they start referring to him as like something else. A half demon. It, right. But at first, I was. I couldn't figure out. Are is this white kid supposed to be ja eventually Keanu Reeves? Is he supposed to be Japanese? And are or we is supposed it, to believe that Keanu Reeves is Japanese? <laughs> Or is he a white kid and nobody cares or what? Because they never say something like, hey, don't trust the white guy or the or the Westerner. <laughs> it's never brought up. <laughs> right? And like, that's so open. But either way, so Keanu Reeves is a half demon. Fans of Inuyasha, sorry to get nerdy for a moment, will be very familiar with this. Um, and then another thing that becomes kind of cool, though, very similar to Inuyasha, is the first um, kind of major scene of the movie where all of the warriors for this one lord are out hunting, and with them is Keanu Reeves. Everybody else is on horseback, and they just have Keanu Reeves like just walking around on his feet as just like, ah, look at the dirty guy. And he's like... Look at the dirty guy, not like, who's the white guy? Yeah, right? <laughs> But anyway, so he's like, all right, the beast is up the hill. And so I'm and so you you hear the beast and it's just like, oh, they're like there's like a deer, like they're hunting some shit, I don't know. Like a wild boar, like a bear or and something. And then rampaging through the forest comes just a building of an animal that's just tearing through trees. And you're this like, Good thing, God This thing is and they only show its face for one second. It's like, it runs like a bull, but it has yeah. like a dragon face with six eyes on it, but it's like the size of a dinosaur. It's huge, it's got massive horns, so right away it's just like, oh shit, like this movie might not suck, even though all of the dialogue up till now made you think it would probably suck. And I was still not convinced because uh, I wrote, what? I because I wrote what is this thing? Why is this? The thing? second I saw it, I was like, "This is like a live action anime." Like I was into it. We have a half demon protagonist, and then we have large mythical creatures. Like this was Inuyasha, and then freaking, it's just it's all downhill from there, though. Uh, <laughs> so it's true. So another important part in this scene, though, is Keanu Reeves as he's trying not to get trampled by the building monster. He looks over and he sees a white fox with mismatched colored eyes. And, you know, so that's another kind of like 
creature that they are big into over there. And so he's like, huh, that's weird, but back to the thing trying to kill me. Eventually they kill, eventually Keanu Reeves, of course, kills the beast, and then immediately is like, wasn't me, I'm I'm nobody, and gives credit to the guy who's like, fuck you, I don't want you to save me. <laughs> and it's just like, and, and that also sets the tone of the movie, like, oh, they're just going to be like needlessly mean to him, and then we're supposed to feel bad for Keanu Reeves, and then just like... Japanese, Japanese, Japanese. I don't know. Basically, oh, the samurai, the best thing ever, and he's not a samurai, so fuck you, Keanu Reeves. Also, are you Japanese? I don't know. Let's never mention it. <laughs> Let's so, never mention it. Anyway. <laughs> so then we cut to a temple that has, like, ghosts in it, <laughs> or whatever, and then there's, like, a king. At this point, we don't know who he is, and then the fox, a CGI fox, walks up and turns into a lady, End of that scene. So that's another lord. <laughs> and then they're preparing for the Shogun to MacGuffin or whatever so that the movie can happen. You know, like the beginning of Game of Thrones when, you know, Eddard is preparing for Robert to come to Winterfell. Basically, just think Game of Thrones. I, this is this is nothing like Game of Thrones. Oh, right. Game of Thrones is good. <laughs> so... <laughs> So anyway, this also comes down to one of my uh, favorite jokes of the whole movie, just because of how bad it was. Like, during these scenes, the dialogue is so stiff. Picture the most, like, serious, least humorous Japanese person you can, and that's all 50 of the people in every scene. And All 50 of the people in that scene, and then Keanu Reeves, who is not known for his emoting. Not at all. Not since Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And so, he, he, like it, like you, like I think we need to stress that a little bit at the top. Otherwise, we'll just never stop harping on it. He is a robot. It's, all of them are robots. No, but the only person who's doing anything is the witch because she's a witch. So she's like, oh, I'm evil, and oh, you know. Ooh. Also, she becomes crazy. <laughs> Right, she becomes crazy, but in the meantime, Keanu Reeves is like, you're a witch, oh. and, I know, and I know that you're evil, and I'm going to stop you now. And you're like, oh, God. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, if only he had actually gotten to say that. But uh, So the thing that made me laugh, though, was like the Shogun visits, and with him comes this one lord, who, by the way, has like long black hair and dark purple robes. So you're like, oh, the bad guy. Like, he's the bad guy. <laughs> Great. I'm I'm glad he, you know, dressed in his uniform so that we could identify the bad guy. They might as well just had Vincent D'Onofrio show up or something. <laughs> Pretty much. And so so he goes up to the, you know, good guy lord and is like, "Oh, you have a very nice whore." And the and the good guy lord goes, "That's not a whore. That's my daughter." Except, wah, wah, wah. except he goes, "That is no whore. That is my daughter." And, and so <laughs> it was the driest, like, that's my daughter joke, which, you got to be honest, is a joke that I've ever heard. It fell so I flat. I, I hate it. it. I don't know if it was, though. It was supposed to be some kind of thing. It was so flat and dry and shitty. I was like, oh, God, please don't get cheeky, movie. <sighs> I don't. I don't know about that. But... And so all I could think, though, after, like, a little bit more of this is just like, please talk slower and say the word honor more in every <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Tell me that's not true, though. They were like, no, every sentence had the word like, honor in it. The closest thing we get to any sort of break in that or like comedic relief is like a fat guy who just, who <laughs> dies. <laughs> the fat guy, like. <laughs> and that was their so, best attempt at humor. It's like, hey, look, like the movie's been a little dry, but like here, here's a fat guy, and he's like, he does it, funny little Paul Blart stuff. But it's not even like he like says two stupid things, but it's never like, oh, who ate all the rice? Oh, it was Kazuki or whatever. Uh, <laughs> like, there's nothing like that. He is just fat. And at one point, I don't know. Guys if are if funny. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the same thing I did. He's bathing in a, in a pond, and he starts to come out of it, and they're lingering on him, and he's getting closer and closer to his waist. And I'm like, no, no, no! And then he's wearing a loincloth. I was like, whew! Kayla also was just like, 
Yo, man, here comes a dick shot. <laughs> comes a fat guy dick. But we're okay. There are, in fact, no penises in this movie. Oh, thank God. Uh, so, you're disappointed. Don't lie. So, <laughs> so the so the Shogun's there for a tournament, and the tournament starts. So the bad guy, all in purple, he's like, well, my fighter happens to be a nine-foot giant monster person. And he, like, clomp, clomps out there, and you're like, all right, now there's a giant in the movie. Great. And <laughs> why not? And uh, Keanu Reeves is, like, waiting for the good guy's Champion. fighter to come out. Champion to come out. But uh, the witch, who was, uh, as a CGI fox, makes the guy have witch sickness or something. Witch poison. Witch poison. Either so way, Keanu... his eyes roll back in his head or whatever. Right. So Keanu Reeves is like, oh, I'll put on the armor and I'll pretend to be the samurai and fight him. And, you know, he's Keanu Reeves, so he's fighting the guy and he's doing okay. But then eventually he loses. And his helmet gets knocked off. And they all see he is a white guy, which may or may not be a big deal. I don't know. And <laughs> so that's, that's also funny, though, because, like, so... I actually, what did you think of this fight overall? I thought it was pretty decent. It was short. It, it was, was very short, short. But, like, I thought it was pretty good. Keanu Reeves is doing, like, the David versus Goliath thing. Like, the big guy is tanking it up. He's got thick armor. Keanu Reeves is rolling all around him, but he's laying on hits. But all the hits are getting turned by the thick plate. And it's like, the, okay, the, like, this is this is pretty good. I could watch a bit of this. The biggest complaint I'll have about the action is the action was good, but every time other than the last climactic battle scene, it was all maybe a minute and a half. Like there's that scene very short to your point. Very short. Like there's that scene where Keanu Reeves kills a bunch of guards. That's maybe like twenty five seconds long. Yeah. Like the fight scenes are good, yeah, but they're never like now here's the big battle. It's always like, okay, well I, I stopped that guy and now we talk for fifteen minutes. Yeah, they're definitely pretty parceled out. Um, but again, though, like, overall action-wise, and that's another thing, like, this movie has so many good elements. I think the premise was good. I think the fantasy elements were well, you know, well thought out. I and think the action it, was well done. And it's poorly executed. There's so much just shitty dialogue and story in between everything. So the Shogun sees that uh, Keanu Reeves is that guy, and he looks at it like he gets down on his knees and has Keanu Reeves pick his head up and goes like, "You're not a samurai." Like he had You're to get a that white guy, right? Like he had to get that close. So when he did that, I was like, "Wait a minute, is he a white guy or not?" I don't just so, tell me. <laughs> so the Shogun's like, uh, "Kill him. He's not a samurai." And then the daughter's in love with him, blah, 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 love story. So the good guy, uh, old man, is like, no, don't kill him. This is my fault. So the Shogun's like, fine. Instead, I want you to take his armor off and beat him. So a hundred dudes stand up with sticks. And I was and like, I, are they all going to just beat the shit out of Keanu? Reeves? I thought everybody in town was going to get a chance to just hit him with a stick. <laughs> it would have been so good. Just like, in uh, instead, four guys hit him with a stick for about 30 seconds. It looks like it hurts, but it doesn't look like he's going to die. It doesn't look like everybody <laughs> in the town uses him to, like, their exhaustion. Because as soon as he said, like, I was waiting for the scene in, that scene in Kung Pao. Or, like, those the four... scene in The Matrix. <laughs> right, where they just beat him for, like, an hour. But it's not that, though. But uh, so, but also, like, here's the thing that annoys me the most about this scene, when he's like, you're not a samurai, only samurai can fight, and it's like, really? They couldn't have had another samurai? They're, apparently, according to this movie, there's at least 47 other samurai right there. <laughs> they couldn't have gone out and been like, hey, I, I can't do this, but like, can anybody else, you know, step in? Any of you will do or not have a thing where it's like, oh, you're not a samurai, but clearly you're pretty good at it. <laughs> like, hey, do you want to maybe be my royal guard or something? I don't, I don't know. Nope, beat him. Beat him instead of just straight up murdering him because I'm being nice. So after this, the witch who is helping the guy in the purple robes 
try to something that isn't completely clear to me. Do you want me to kind of cover the next little bit? Well, it just, it comes off because it's like, she, she, they're trying to kill the good guy, or get rid of the good guy. The good emperor. So, right. Or the good uh, lord, sorry. So he can just be in charge of, like, this little village? Okay, so... The good um, the good lord is lord of a pretty decent domain actually. He's got a he's got a large standing army, not as large as evil lords, but he's got a decent standing army as well as a decent core of samurai and a lot of, you know, land and wealth. Um so what they're going to do, do you want me to just take over from here for a little bit? Yeah, just go for it. All right. So, lady gets some blood from evil emperor and uses that to create kind of a blood spell to make a tiny spider. She then <laughs> it's I don't know what else to put it. So When she, you say it it sounds really stupid. <laughs> totally. But uh so she sneaks into the good lord's room and she lowers the spider onto him which drops some poison on his lips and causes him to hallucinate. Also, when you say she sneaks into his room, you mean she CGI, like, wins her way all around the room. She turns into a kimono snake and (laughs) slithers down from the ceiling. With her hair that is sometimes snakes as well. Sometimes Medusa snakes. Something. Something, something hair snakes. So... And drops the spider down, and so it drops some hallucinogen on the Emperor's lips. And so he gets up in the middle of the night, feeling delirious. First thing he does is reach for his sword, thank goodness. So he suddenly, he hears and sees in his mind's eye his daughter either cavorting with the evil lord or getting raped. He sees her being raped because she's screaming for her okay. dad. Who's yeah. who's fucking some guy who's like, hey, I wish my dad was here to see this. Some people have daddy issues. <laughs> I don't judge. It sounds like you're awfully judgy. I don't judge. Okay, I guess that's me then. Yeah, it's just you. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> so, either way... He goes and is like, well, I'm going to put a stop to this, and is just laying his sword down when suddenly the audience is treated to, you know, reality, and we see the evil lord roll out of the way and be like, whoa, old man, what the fuck? And all of a sudden the guards rush in and are like, that's not okay. So then, of course, Stiffy McShogan shows up and is like, so, and he takes he takes ten minutes to say this, (laughs) <laughs> you t- he goes, He goes. you uh, tried to murder a guest, you are dishonored, so the punishment for doing this is kill yourself. Is kill yourself. And that's because I'm nice, I'm going to let you kill yourself. And he's like, thank you, Emperor, you're so kind and benevolent. So, <laughs> Oh, I get to cut my own guts out of my body? Whew, I thought you were going to kill me. Yeah, right? <laughs> and so... The emperor, you know, does the deed, or the lord does the deed, and the emperor is like, all right, so samurai come out here. By the way, you're now ronin, and you're like, oh, man, how many ronin are there? Are there 47? (laughs) Are there 47 ronin? Nope, there are only 46 at this point. (laughs) All right. And so, so anyway, and then this next sequence of events was annoying as shit to me. Well, yeah. I, I I couldn't believe this. <laughs> Evil Lord takes over. Oh, yeah, so the Emperor also is like, to make sure that there's no bad blood between Evil Lord and the land of Good Emperor, you, daughter of Good Emperor, you're going to marry him. And that way, everything will be hunky-dory. <laughs> Everybody wins. Everybody happy? All right, see ya. All right, I'm the Shogun. <laughs> <laughs> and he just takes off. And so then the evil lord, this is the thing that annoyed me. First thing he does is like, we got to watch out for the former commander of the samurai. You know what we should do? We should throw him in a pit. Not just like, we should kill him right here and now. And then Keanu Reeves, hmm, she seems to dig the weird half-demon guy. You know what we should do? Kill him. No, they don't do that. They sell him into slavery. To slavery the Dutch. To- <laughs> like, they specifically say, sell him into slavery to the Dutch. And I was like, wait a minute, the Dutch? 
Well, Zach, there are two things I can't stand in this world. <laughs> people who are intolerant of other people's and, ethnic rights and, and the, the Dutch. Dutch. <laughs> it's like, it's such a short little part of this movie, but for some reason there's like this weird bent against the Dutch. You know what? I actually kind of like this because it kind of, <laughs> it, 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 well, I didn't really care that it was the Dutch, but uh, it really kind of harkened back to like a scene from Pirates 3. Like, it was a really seedy, like, pirate-looking port. There was a lot of, like, you know, no-good characters, if you will. And so we find Keanu Reeves kind of working as a gladiator. Oh, wait, you, you missed where all of the sudden it's a year later. Oh, yeah, all of a sudden it's a year later because, like, the producers got as bored with the movie as we did. I, I mean, when that happened, I was like, why? <laughs> well, you know why. Because the Emperor stated that uh, the wedding was, like, they were going to be matched, but the wedding wouldn't take place for a year. And so, obviously, know, the plot didn't care until, you know, the wedding was about to happen. You could have had them do anything in the meantime. They're like, nah, let's just skip a whole year. <laughs> I'm glad they did, because, frankly, you know, the movie wasn't doing so hot, so... Oh God knows there would have been a lot a year's worth of that dialogue, right? And I that would have that might have literally killed me. So <laughs> I've just got to be honest with you. So, like you said, the lead samurai he gets out of his pit because I guess his jail sentence was a year. Or and, who even knows? Again, like evil guy, not even trying. Right, and he's like, okay, Keanu Reeves mentioned to me that he thinks he saw a witch. And he appears to have been right. So <laughs> In <I'm>, retrospect. <laughs> in retrospect, he seems to have something going there. So I'm going to find him. I'm going to go to the Dutch islands. He goes there, and he and uh, Keanu Reeves is in the bowels of a giant Dutch slave ship something, fighting a monster person. A Dutch monster person. Yeah, is the monster Dutch? Why are we vilifying the Dutch so much? You know, some cultures really just have had it too easy. They had, like, the Dutch have had an easy ride for a while Does anyone now. not forget the atrocities of the East India Trading Company? Lord knows I haven't or know, and know what that is. <laughs> well, anyway, the Dutch are pure evil, so... <laughs> okay. So Keanu Reeves is uh, fighting a giant guy with a ball chain. Another scene of pretty decent action. I'll give you the CGI knock here. It, the monster doesn't look super great. They did it better especially, in 300. Especially when somebody cuts off his head, and then <laughs> like one of one of the crowd members picks up the the Dutch monster head, and they didn't even make like a puppet head. Like he's holding a CGI head. Yeah. Again, I, it looks bad. <laughs> overall, I would say that you and I are definitely in favor of real props. Uh, Very much so. I mean, you can just tell it looks it looks cleaner. So uh, the the leader of the Ronin now finds Keanu Reeves. He goes up to him after he fights the monster, and Keanu Reeves has been, I guess, been a gladiator for a year, so isn't used to doing anything that isn't killing people. And gets in a fight with the Ronin, the lead Ronin, and the Ronin's like, no, 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 remember me? I need your help to save this, that, and the other thing. So they fight for a while, and then they don't, because Keanu Reeves remembers all of a sudden. And then they escape, and the Dutch chase them, because the Dutch are the only thing worse than witches in this movie. They really are. Again, they've had it way too easy for way long. I haven't forgotten. <laughs> so, I enjoyed this bit. It was very kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean 3. So, I don't know. Yeah, my favorite movie. Did you even see it? No, because I didn't like any of the others. I thought they were all great, so I don't care. Uh, you're entitled to that opinion, and I respect that. So, oh, thanks. So, uh, <laughs> so we skip over, you and I are at least skipping over, blah, blah, blah. We see fat samurai bathing, and then... <laughs> so, and now the band's back Narrowly together. avoid a dick shot, and now the band's <laughs> back together. <laughs> That's really the band's plot back sequence. Yeah, uh, he was fighting a Dutch monster, now the band's back together, plus Keanu, and they're going to get revenge. And now you think the movie's just going to take off. By the way, ever since, like, after the point of, like, flash forward a year, the movie took a really different tone. Suddenly the dialogue was a lot less, like, honor and stilted, and, like, the characters, like, the Ronins start joking around with each other more, and the 
a lot of it became a lot more bearable for for only a little while. I was gonna say I didn't feel that. <laughs> it if you and you never will. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I, but anyway, I mean, I so take my I'm word wrong, for it's it. Fine. <laughs> take my word for it. In the middle of the movie, the the dialogue is suddenly like, oh, why didn't the person who was directing this like direct when that stiff uptight Shogun was talking? And then, so everything lightens the fuck up. They go to a village, and uh, Keanu Reeves kills a bunch of guards because it's been ten minutes since he did anything. You know, an action beat. Then, right, and every ten pages, you need an action beat. <laughs> and then they're like, we, we need swords, we need, you know, weapons to go fight this. So Keanu Reeves is like, I know where we can get really good swords. The ghost forest inhabited by the lizard people. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, they, and then when he took his tinfoil hat <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> so they go to a bamboo forest that is literally there are just fog ghosts swirling around them. This was also and, like pretty pretty anime Japanese mythology though. And also Yeah. And also one of the things is like in feudal Japan you couldn't have a sword. They were very particular about avoiding arming the peasants. So that that I that I did know and I was okay with that. Yeah, so it was kind of interesting. Like that's what a sword was not only like what marked a samurai's office. Like they were one of the few people to even have it. So it was even harder to char challenge like a lord's military might. Right, and it but it wasn't it wasn't so much that they were like okay I know this guy who will like sell us swords if we get him like scrap metal or something. He's like no we got to get magic swords. No, they did or try whatever. that though. They were like they 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 first went to that village. They're like all right we'll get some swords here. Then they're like shit, evil guy's army is here, and they are like basically burned it down. So oh uh, yeah you're so right. So they killed right. those guys, and they're like well we got four swords now, so <laughs> let's just keep doing that. And they're like that's a terrible plan. Let's try this. Three next, more than we had, <laughs> right? Let's try this next village. And he's like, "They're gonna be everywhere. We gotta, we gotta go for the long bomb." I, I know a guy, and by a guy, <laughs> I mean a demon. So, I mean a, a lizard demon who's a monk for some reason, and also he's so, not a fan of humans. <laughs> <laughs> or me, really? And am I a human or a white guy? Who knows? Let's go. He hates Americans. So, I mean, half humans. <laughs> So they get they get through the ghost forest, and Keanu Reeves goes, and he sees this, like, he goes onto this, like, cliff, and there's a sword, like, stabbed in the ground, and he's like, ah, Keanu Reeves, you've returned, I am your old master, Expe exposition real fast. And Keanu <laughs> Reeves really is like... It, yeah. They do. They're like, I ah, remember when you were here and you were a little boy, then you ran away? You know, the what happened at the remembers. beginning of... <laughs> It happened at the beginning of the movie. Anyway, steps into the light. He is a lizard man. I don't know why. <laughs> because, you know, a little dose of unreality. I kind of Well, because we, we haven't had any unreality since the dinosaur in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> since, like, Fox Lady cast Spell and did her kimono snakeness. <laughs> I guess. And that is, like, and I know I said it already, but... This movie needs to pick what it wants to be. Agreed. 300 was like, everything is over the top. There are monsters everywhere. There are giant cyclopses. The sky is a weird color. Gerard Butler is the yelling every line. The color saturation was really abnormal. Right. So it was like, this is a weird place, but we're constantly in this weird place. Yeah. A lot of the times... The fat guy's taking a bath in the pond and everybody's eating rice, and then all of a sudden, there's a lizard man. And the con and it's so jarring yeah. when we jump from one thing to the other. Yeah, exactly. Like if they if they tried to get a little less grounded in between the scenes, I think it would help it a lot. But I did enjoy the fight scene that came with this uh bit. So, yeah, this was uh, this was probably honestly this was my favorite part of the movie. My favorite fight scene was the one of the final fights, but either way, this was excellent. I don't just I don't just mean fight scenes. Like I didn't hate the dialogue oh, in this part. Okay. I didn't I didn't hate the mysticism in this part because it was sort of making sense. It was it reminded me of again in 300 when Leonidas goes to talk to the uh Xerxes. The uh, No, 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 no. The um the the priests, oh. the, like evil monster priests. Yeah. <laughs> it 
it sort of came off like that. And it was like, ooh, he's dealing with these otherworldly people so that he can deal with his, like, human problems. problems and whatever. And I really like this part of the movie. I didn't have a problem with this five minutes. All right. So why don't we uh, take off with you then? So Keanu Reeves and Oishi, the second in command, uh, head into the tree where all these people are. And so... Right, and Keanu Reeves is like, okay, uh, the lead Ronin, you'll come with me. Don't draw your sword, never draw your sword, because bad things will happen if you do that. So while Keanu Reeves is talking to the lizard man leader, the head of the Illuminati, the uh, the head of the Ronin is in like this weird church monastery thing, and there's a bunch of lizard people praying, and... So Keanu Reeves is like, oh, humans are good, and these guys have, like, a just cause, and I need your help. You need to give me swords. And he's like, well, we'll see if your friend can pass a test. So all of a sudden, the lead Ronin's other Ronin's show up, and he thinks, like, it's all an illusion. His we guys are like, later. what? We find out later, but his his guys are like, oh, my God, these are fucking lizard people. Let's kill them now. <laughs> and and so they're pulling their swords out, and they're losing. The demon guys are just, you know, killing them. They're, like, tricking each other into shooting each other with arrows. And the whole time, the lead Ronin is standing there amongst all this madness going, like, oh, I really want to pull my sword because I really want to try to fight these demons, but he told me not to also – doesn't seem like we're winning, so it would be pointless. <laughs> and and uh, Keanu Reeves is talking to the head of the Illuminati, and he goes, Keanu Reeves, if you can catch, if you can grab this sword before I do, you can have your weapons. And this is only one of two times that Keanu Reeves turns into a CGI kimono. Only one of two. I wish he did it more. He turns into a CGI kimono, gets the sword, and the lizard guy's like, all right, I'm cool with that now. And the head of the Ronin all of a sudden, like, wakes up, and none of his guys are there, none of his guys are dead. And the, it turns out it was all a trick, and he didn't draw his sword, so now all of his Ronin get these magic lightsabers or whatever. Yeah, I mean, the fight scene in there was great, though. All of the lizard people were doing kind of the thing where they... I guess kind of like in Harry Potter where you saw the two kind of white and black streams kind of flying around and clashing with each other. I totally know what you're talking about. Do you? No, I never saw those movies. Anyway, so so the when the lizard people kind of move around in the fight scenes, like we said, they, they turn, we call it a kind of CGI kimono, but they basically like, they turn into sort of a wisp of fabric and they fly across the room like really fast and they swirl around and, you know, they move at speeds like six times that of a human. And so, you know, they kind of swish over to somewhere and then pop out and are, like, doing damage. Then they kind of swish away. And so it's it's really cool watching them engage uh, with these guys. And you see Keanu Reeves do it once, and so you're like, oh, shit, he can do that. But fucking, like you said, he just, he never... <laughs> like, oh, you have a power that is demonstrated by these lizard people to be, like, unbeatable. Why utilize that? I don't know why you would. So <laughs> <laughs> Seems unfair, really. <laughs> really. <sighs> nice. So, now that they're armed, they form a plan. Um, so, their plan becomes, okay, Evil Lord occasionally leaves his castle, we'll call it, uh, once a year to go pray at the temple of his ancestors. And that's when he's vulnerable. He barely brings any guards, but the thing is, even his guards don't know when he's going to do it. We have to figure out when he leaves the walls so we can ambush him, and that's when we get our revenge. So, at first, you know, like, we've been drawing comparisons to the 300 this whole time, they they talked about the strength of his army, and they're like, oh, he's got a thousand soldiers at his command, and that's not including just the samurai. So you'd think, like, oh, the 47 are going to use these swords, and they're just going to fucking be like, all right, there's there's a thousand of you, but we, we're on a mission from God, and we've got great swords. Let's see it. And then Keanu Reeves is going to turn into a kimono, and then, you know, kill, like, 30 guys at once. <laughs> and... No, I, I was waiting for I that to happen. I was too. I know. Like, and I then because I'm when, sad. 
And when that doesn't happen, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> but what happens instead isn't terrible, unless you're one of the Ronin. <laughs> we'll get, we'll go, yeah, we'll talk about what happens. Let's just go right into it. So, well, so, so yeah, I guess, I guess we can't, well, we sort of have to talk about how they get in there. Sure. So, th- so at first they send out, they send out a spy to figure out, like, okay, where, when is he doing it, that he goes to the town where the temple is, and he kind of gets the gist of when it might happen. And so, in the background, though, we see uh, someone with mismatched eyes, which we assume to be the witch. We don't assume. At this point, it's guaranteed. Okay, it's the witch. And so it's like, hmm, so she seems to have heard it, but she also seems crazy, so we'll see what she lets happen. Kind of flash forward, because frankly, the movie, as always, takes forever to get around to the damn point. So <laughs> so the guy, so you see the 47 Ronin kind of creeping through a field, and the field is guarded in intervals by the evil lord samurai. The, the 47 Ronin are slowly taken down guys one by one, closing in, until they finally see the lord in the middle of the field with his dark kimono and hair. And they're like, all right, this is it. Fucking raise your bows, get your swords ready. This guy's going to fucking die. And then it, you turn and it's the witch. And it's like, oh, shit. And so for, at first it's like, oh, it's not him. But then she like she lights the whole fucking field on fire. And so it goes yeah, from she... like, oh, it's not him to just like, oh, shit. So like, yeah, she light she does magic at them. And then there's an ambush where a bunch of guys in, with bows and arrows show up and kill a, a couple of the 47 Ronin. It looked like the a ju- lot. It looked like they it suffered did. huge attrition. And then in the next it, scene, we can go back to the it's fight just real quick. The fat guy. Yeah, in the next scene, like, they literally, it seems like they haven't lost a man. If, the, if not, there's more of them. <laughs> they just lose the fat guy. That's all they lose because we see him die. He's the only one we see die. But, like, again, in the action scene, the action is excellent. This witch looks like a badass boss character. She is just throwing fire everywhere, and it's just, it looks like she's untouchable. The giant the giant samurai shows up for about ten seconds. Exactly, in order to get Does, another kill. Uh, yeah, but, like... Yeah, but who gives a fuck? <laughs> No, if you're going to have that guy, he should, like, rip somebody in half. Or at least, like, go through a few of them. I want to see a fucking giant thing go through things. Oh, that's right, we have a giant? We have a giant, let's use that. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Oh my god, we have a giant? (laughs) No, I don't know about you, but I was waiting for the giant to take his mask off, and he was going to be some kind of monster. Yeah, or, like... You know, I wouldn't have been surprised at that. I guess I was kind of too used to Game of Thrones where, like, you've just got the mountain that rides. But you're right. Well, like, it would have been, in this world, he should have been some kind of creature or some something. I don't know. Something interesting. In, in, instead, we'll get to it where he might have been, like, a robot <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so they get out and they're like, okay, well, that didn't work. I guess we just have to go attack him on his wedding night. So they so they stop like a kabuki circus, a traveling kabuki group. Yeah, and they're like, "So, can you help us kill him?" And they're like, "Sure." <laughs> so they're like, "Oh, well, uh do you got 3 days because we need to teach you your part in the kabuki play in like no time at all." Because the main Ronin is the main character in the Kabuki play. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> so, they, uh, while they're setting up the Kabuki play, uh, Keanu Reeves and the other, I don't know, at this point there's probably only five guys left because we saw everybody else die in the last scene. And again, though, there's like 40 of them. Right, but when they, but like you said, it looks like there was more of them somehow. Yeah, like, it, like, when they were walking back to their kind of hideout defeated, it looked like there was a fucking army. And I was like, where were all these people when the field was burning? <laughs> so, the, the, they're climbing up they're climbing up walls, and they're breaking people's necks, and they're shooting people with arrows from, like, a thousand yards away, and they're standing in all the places that the guards are. They're setting up their ambush. 
And meanwhile, people are clapping because the head Ronin is apparently doing a very good job in the Kabuki show. He is excellent and, in his role, apparently, because he has <laughs> evil Lord guy, like, completely fascinated. He is, like, upset think, every time the his wife even looks away for a moment. He's like, no, 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 like, are you missing this? What? <laughs> Do you think he's, like, up there and he's like, maybe I should do this after revenge? Yeah, yeah like, jeez, maybe I, maybe I have a day job. I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you take take it away from where it goes wrong? Okay, so like you said, all of the, the Ronin are doing the whole, like, secret agent thing and just killing every guard silently and perfectly without any flaw because... What are guards supposed to do but just die quietly, I guess? Right, if you're going to do anything when you're dying, like, scream, clap your hands, anything. Or stand, like, back-to-back with someone. (laughs) Right, there's just a lot of, like, guys going like, ugh, and then they're dead. And then just, like, no one sees anything. Like, three people who are standing next to each other die in rapid succession without any of them noticing. And, like, it's... I, sometimes I have trouble suspending my disbelief in these, like, secret agent scenes. I don't like them. Matt, a dragon shows up five minutes later. And I suspended my disbelief. That should give you a sign <laughs> of how, like, I don't know about this stealth bit. So... <laughs> I'm buying everything else. I'm the dragon, buying the sure. dragon, but, like, come on. Those three guys, none of them got off a word. Come on. Somebody, the third guy had to have heard something. Right, like, how drunk are they? So, <laughs> so in any case, uh, the climax of the play comes, and the head, the head Ronin grabs a sword from below the stage, and everyone's like, oh man, there's a sword in this play, I love swords. And he, <laughs> You're right, nobody's like, wait a minute, they're all like, oh, this play's awesome. Right, again, could not be more entranced with his performance. And so he just, he, like, takes a running start straight at the evil lord, who, again, couldn't be more enraptured with this play, when one of the guys in a guard tower gets an arrow shot off right before he dies, and that's when someone, everyone's like, wait, that's, what? (laughs) This isn't a play? Like, which also, by the way, begs the question, like, so the guy in the guard tower was like, I should probably shoot that kabuki guy. Like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you're right. He had no idea that the Kabuki guy was in on uh, it. Up to this point, like it was just a Kabuki show. So, do you do you think that's why none of the guards said anything? Because they're all like, "Man, this is great." You know what? They too were probably really digging the Kabuki show, and they were slacking off on their job. More props <laughs> to this guy with his performance, which you know, from my perspective, only looked okay. But well, I don't. I, don't, I was gonna say. Like, we, both of us know the next movie isn't 47 Kabuki actors, because we know how this ends. Turns out his career doesn't take off, but, (laughs) but we'll get to that. So in any case, he, he takes an arm wound and isn't able to complete the leap of murder, but this kind of sets off, like, all, so all of the evil Lord Samurai were in the audience with him, so they get up in arms and they're like, oh shit, shit's hitting the fan. So this is like, this is the big battle of the movie. The 47 Ronin are rushing in to try and take these guys out. Or 300, who knows at this point. It looks like there's so many. And so, and the the evil lord's, you know, army kind of rises to his defense. So we got a fight on our hands, and it looks pretty banging. Uh, So all the samurai rally around the evil lord. They cover him with their shields to defend from ammo fire which, by the way, somehow also magically protects them from arrow fire because suddenly none of them are taking arrows even though their shields are anywhere but protecting themselves. Yeah, it was... Suddenly they would only fire at the shields. I don't know. I had so many other problems. I was like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. It's working. They're doing some kind of (laughs) caravan of shields. Okay. Right, it's working. Um, And... And I, okay, I swear this is the last one. I swear this is the last time I bring up 300. No, do it more. But, <laughs> you know, just want to talk about 300 for the rest of the podcast? You know what? Fuck no. it. Fuck 47, <laughs> 47 Ronin. So. 4700? 4700. 
That'd be a great movie. No, so like in like I know this is based off like three hundred roughly, a true story. It's based off of forty seven Ronin, a true story. There actually is right. the legend of the forty seven Ronin. No, I am aware of that. Because the movie the tells you again. <laughs> well, yeah. But, like, the difference with the 300 is, obviously, in 300 real life, it wasn't just 300 people. It was 300 Spartans and then a few thousand other Greeks. Yeah, but that, they're but, boring. Right, but even in the movie, they go, like, okay, there's only 300 of us, but we're going to bottleneck everybody, and then we'll be able to kill everyone, and it'll be great. Yeah. In this movie, it's 47 guys versus, like, 3,000 guys, and we're all spread out everywhere. They're not going to make it. Zach, you didn't even watch the movie. They clearly <laughs> stated that his total strength in the field was a thousand warriors. Oh, you're right. What I said was dumb now. God. So me- merely they just take on an entire fortress worth of soldiers. So while the uh, the, the evil guy and the princess are getting away. While the evil all guy the- is dragging the princess away because it's not like she's right. trying to escape. <laughs> The 47 Ronin are outside, and finally, here comes the giant, 10-foot-tall samurai guy. Here's where he takes his mask off, and he's a monster. And he just or he bites takes, the head off of someone. Right, or he takes his gloves off, and he has, like, knives for hands or something. Instead, a guy blows up a building, and the giant samurai just falls just apart. blown to pieces. But when you say pieces, you only you don't see his pieces. arm. <laughs> right. There's not like, oh, well, here's his arm and there's his Blood leg and, and his head flies off. Right. It's just armor falls apart. So that happened, and I was like, was this guy like a magic robot suit? <laughs> I I didn't I didn't embrace that very much, but I definitely had the exact same thought when he was blown apart. It's like there's there's nothing in like, there. <laughs> Like, like, and the thing, too, is, like, they build this character up twice before this. Right? He o- and he only kills one guy at the uh, the Temple of the Elders. He's, it's, his he, death is so anticlimactic. Well, so, and before that, though, like, he comes out, and at least 20 Ronin are just looking at him like, what do we do? Right, this is, like, this is the scene where the 47 Ronin, like, 10 of them get eviscerated. But this guy just falls apart like he was made of Legos. You know what? You might have finally solved it. Maybe that... <laughs> He's made, he was made of Legos? <laughs> he was a sentient Lego man? He was a sentient Lego man. Well, uh, well, that was the part I wanted to get to. Take us away to the dragon, please. Oh, my God. By the way, Zach, okay, it's not a dragon. It's a wyvern. I will. I want to end the podcast not recording this one, but doing it ever again. And also never speak to me. It's a dragon. <laughs> it's an eastern dragon known as a wyvern. So It's a dragon! Yeah. Whatever. What but happened? in any case, so the, the rest of the Ronin are handling kind of like the grunty soldiers, and as they're fighting, like, the demon swords start whirring around magically, and you start going like, oh shit, like, things are getting real. And so that suddenly the warriors are moving quicker and slicing and dicing, and it's like, this is pretty crazy. And then, as we see that, we settle in for another fight, which is Keanu Reeves trying to defend the princess as the witch dragon lady comes. So she comes out, and she's and he's like, nothing is going to stop me, I'm going to end you. And she's like, well, you say that, but do you really know what I am? Well, she's like, do you really know who I am? And he's like, yeah, I do, and I'm not really that worried about it. And she's just like, oh, well. Oh, well, in that case, let me, uh, since you're not worried, let me just turn into a dragon. So she turns into a dragon, and he sticks to his word. He's not worried. He's not, but, like, I kind of was, because she looked pretty intimidating. And then this this fight was good, but I feel like it could have been better. It was. It suffers from the same thing as every fight. It's good, but it's really short. Like this should be a ten minute fight. It actually lasted a little while. They go in and like they go to it, and then they cut back to kind of the rest of the big fight in the fortress. Then they cut back to it. I would have. But but I I I look at it like if you cut to like yeah. raw footage of World War Two, where there's just fleets of Nazis just fighting the British, and then we cut to. Two kids at a schoolyard pushing each other. 
Fair enough. Because Keanu Reeves is fighting this giant dragon. It's breathing fire at him. He's cutting through the fire with his magic sword. It throws a giant concrete block at him, and he, like, cuts the concrete block in half with his sword. Then we cut to the evil emperor fighting the head of the Ronin, and they're just sort of, like, pushing each other. They're just pushing each other around. And because those two fights are interconnected, it goes between a relatively decent fight to a, I don't care about these two guys. Yeah, I definitely I definitely could have used a lot more of Keanu Reeves' fights with Lady Wyvern. And also, what I was going to say, though, is this was the time to whip out him, like, zinging around as the fucking, like, flying kimono. Oh, yeah, this is when he should, like, take his shirt off or something and just be like, zoom, 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 zoom. I was so looking forward to him just zinging around and fighting this thing. That would have been, like, it could have been pretty fucking cool. Instead, he's holding his ground, and then all of a sudden he does it once and kills the dragon, and you're like, well, that worked. Yeah, right? Like, he's just sitting there taking it for, like, five minutes in this fight, just, like, you know, blocking... Like you said, cutting through the fire, cutting through a statue, like, the dragon will come in and kind of, like, snap and try and bite him, and he'll, like, block that with his sword and get a, get a couple weak cuts in. And then finally he's like, all right, have we killed enough time? And, like, checks his watch. Okay, great. And then just ends Is it. Is the movie over? He just ends it in one fight. It's not like, you know, because for the rest of the fight, it seemed it seemed almost like a video game boss fight. Like, you take some big moves, you lay on some light hits... You're doing some damage, not a lot yet, but you're doing some damage and you're holding your own. And, like, I was really digging it. And then all of a sudden he's just like, all right, well, it's time for the fight to end, so I'm just going to... I'm going to do the thing I learned as uh, the, from the Lizard Man. And have only ever done once otherwise. And so he does it, the dragon turns back into a lady... And then that's when I hit pause, and they said there were 20 minutes left in this movie. <laughs> and that should have concerned you. Oh, it did! Yeah. That's when, that's when I huffed and said to myself, oh, just be over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once, once the dragon lady dies, there's no reason to watch this movie unless you're really into Japanese culture. So he should kill the dragon lady, and then the narrator comes back and goes, and then they all lived happily ever after. And then they all ate like kings. But uh, that doesn't happen. Nope. Instead, in the most Japanese move ever, the shogun comes out and is like, you didn't listen to me. You fucking, not only that, you killed a fucking lord. That's not okay. And Keanu Reeves should be like, yeah, but the dragon. Did you not see the dragon? There was a fucking dragon. And that guy was a robot, I think, or something? I don't know. Did you not see any of that? He's like, no, I don't give a fuck. So, but because... (laughs) Which one of you was the head of the Kabuki show? You did a... You were good. You were good. You know what? You're my lead Kabukiist. No, (laughs) no, I'm still mad at you, but your son can live because of your Kabuki. (laughs) I wish that's what he said. But he does let the son live. Right. Well, the the uh, like you said, the shogun's like, okay, you killed the lord, you did this. However, you you, you lived respected by the old ways of Bushido. Right. You respected your lord. You avenged him. I told you not to, but I get why you did. So I'm not like that mad. So I'm gonna let you all kill yourselves. And they all are like, Yay! oh my god. <laughs> right, they might exactly. as well have thrown a parade about getting to kill themselves. <laughs> Exactly. He's like, you get to kill yourself. They're like, whoo, good. I was worried you were going to send us to death. <laughs> Ooh, this is much better. So they all, like, you know, get into their fancy, I'm going to kill myself robe. Everyone and, has their, one hanging in their closet. Right. And so they're all sitting in, like, a giant formation. Also, all 47 of them are there again, somehow. Yep, because even though you see people dying, like, they just, their numbers are replenished. <laughs> Like, you you see people die, but they still manage to stay at 47. I don't know. Aggressive recruiting. As they're about to do it, the Shogun's like, wait, uh, head of the Ronin something? Uh, I'm going to let your son, who's like the youngest of the samurai, live because, you know, I want your bloodline to continue because, you know, you're a good guy or whatever. So he's like, that's great. And he's like, right, that's great. Now kill yourself. Son, study Kabuki. (laughs) <laughs> Apparently our family's very good at it. It runs in your genes. 
And so then they all kill each other. Well, they kill themselves. Gosh, if they killed each other, like what would what would that be? That wouldn't be Japanese at all. That would have been a good movie. <laughs> I'd have watched that. Like you, you all, you all are to have a tournament. All right. No one lives. <laughs> and then the last guy gets to kill himself. Right. Exactly. <laughs> So they kill themselves, and then the movie's over. And the movie's like, the 47 Ronin is the favorite tale of Japan, and people go to their gravesite every year to read about how they went and did very good deeds and then killed themselves like every good Japanese citizen should. <laughs> good night, kids. <laughs> but yeah. So Take us off with your overall impressions. Overall impressions was this movie was a huge flop for a reason. <laughs> it, I mean, it's it's clearly, like, it's not original in any sense. They clearly were like, you know, 300's good. What's another cultural story where a small group of people overcome odds? They took that, but they didn't make it original. They tried to do 300, and they did it really poorly. Like we said, and we've harped on it, the dialogue is atrocious. And I mean atrocious. Nobody speaks above a monotone except the fat guy who has three lines and then dies. The, the, the fantastical elements of it were so few and far between that when they happened, you're like, all right, it's so short. What does it matter? Why is there a dinosaur at the beginning? That thing never comes back or is explained. Frankly, this movie was boring. Like, I found it really boring. Yeah, there's a good fight in the beginning and there's a good fight at the end. And then there's an hour and 30 minutes of nothing happening in the middle. Yeah. It's just, I, I did not like this movie. It wasn't, it wasn't even good bad. This was bad bad. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I think. Recommendations. Well, give me yours first because I haven't thought of that, so stall. Great. All right. Stalling. So, overall, my impressions was I wanted to like this movie. The more I saw of this movie, the more angry I got of how it turned out. Because I, I'm i a pretty big fan of anime. So I, I enjoyed seeing all the kind of fantasy elements of it. Uh, like you said, though, they were few and far between. And they weren't really integrated into the main plot of the story other than the plot significance of the witch. Um, it would have been so great to see, you know, more than one of those beasts that they were hunting in the beginning. Like, did they kill the last one of those? Was that it? And not to mention just like the the awful dialogue. It was it was it was terrible every time. Anything with the shogun, especially like ground everything to a halt. It it seemed like he just pulled all the energy out of every scene. And so overall I was I was pretty upset that these great ideas were injected into such a poor story. Um I loved the action scenes. I thought they were pretty exciting, but they were one of the things that I notice a lot with modern action scenes is they tend to be pretty close cut and pretty choppy. You never get, like, a Bruce Lee wide shot that goes on for a couple minutes that just, like, really shows you the fight, and you get to watch a fight, because they don't want to choreograph a fight. They just, like, they just want to show you a bunch of cool bits and then let you picture the fight in your head. But I'm lazy, so I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> overall, I'm glad I watched it. I really am. But I couldn't, in good faith, recommend this movie. You mean the biggest box office flop in history? You don't think you can recommend it? Oddly enough, <laughs> in spite of the clear logical sequence that would lead me to otherwise, I can't <laughs> recommend this movie. Um. Okay, suggestions. I guess it's obvious because we mentioned really? it enough. What I, movie are you going to suggest? <laughs> Tremors 3. No, no, Excellent. No, <laughs> no. no, no. 300, and, I, and I'll give another one, but if you want to see a good version of this, just see 300. It's it's this movie, but good. Um, but you know what? If you want to see a decent Keanu Reeves movie, see The First Matrix. Don't watch the others. Just see the first one. I enjoyed them. He, he, he does a decent job of being like... See, that's a movie where he talks in monotone and he's confused where it makes sense. 
Yeah, because he's kind of thrust into something he doesn't understand, and he's really out of his right. element. That movie fits Keanu Reeves' style of acting. So it <laughs> really it does. Well, I'm just—I was laughing at Keanu Reeves' acting. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, if you want to see, oh, if you want to see bad Keanu Reeves acting, you should see Any other um, Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> He's in that. Oh my God, is that a pile of garbage? <laughs> but it's not the second biggest box office flop of all time. No, that movie did well. <laughs> oh man. So, your suggestion. All right. Um, so, in spite of your recommendation not to see the other Matrix movies, if you want to see Keanu Reeves in a movie with what is, my opinion, the best choreographed fight scenes of many movies I've seen, see the second Matrix. Um, the storyline, not great, but the fight scenes, excellent. They get a lot of that, like I said, wide-angled, long shot of just fighting. And I like that. That appeals to me. Um, in terms of just movies you should see that are similar to this, see Tremors 1. It's about a hardened <laughs> group of people who are resisting an overpowering enemy, namely a Graboid. <laughs> Plus you get to meet Bert, one of my favorite cinematic characters of all time. Oh man, are you excited for Tremors 5 starring Jamie Kennedy? I'm not excited that Jamie, Jamie Kennedy is still breathing. Like... <laughs> Oh, I, I have a feeling that'll that'll be on this podcast soon. Please don't make me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any uh, questions, comments, concerns, or hate mail, we love hate mail. You can email us at moviehotdog at gmail dot com. You can follow us on Twitter at movie hot dog, and if you can like us on Facebook at this movie was a hot dog. Uh, do you have anything else, Matt? Um, watch Jack Brooks Monster Hunter. Yeah, why not? <laughs> also, this movie was a hot dog. This movie was a hot dog. Mm.